This video is part of a series helping you to revise for your A-level chemistry exams. Today we're looking at those minor topics that weren't mentioned in the advanced information from the exam board and what that means for your revision. Two weeks ago, the exam boards released some advanced information listing which topics will carry the majority of the marks for the A-level exams. There are 19 topics not listed in paper one or paper two or paper three for A-level chemistry. So you can just stop revising those, right? Wrong, really, really wrong. I've heard this lots of time from lots of different students and teachers that they're just not going to revise these topics at all. And actually, this is a really terrible strategy to take. Let me explain why. Lots of you are going to go on to undergraduate studies, which even if they're not in pure chemistry, do have some chemistry aspects to them. And you're going to be expected to know all of this stuff, even if it wasn't examined. So from the point of view of further study, you do need to cover the whole course, but that probably doesn't feel like a priority right now when time is of the essence. There's also the fact that understanding one part of the chemistry course will help you to understand other parts better because you can make links. But the most crucial reason of all why you do need to revise the entire course is that the exam board themselves have said that they are still going to try to examine the entire specification and that topics that aren't listed in that original list can still be examined in multiple choice questions, low tariff questions and synoptic questions. Don't forget that in paper three alone, there are 30 marks of multiple choice questions and they could be exclusively on those 19 topics that you haven't revised at all. Low tariff questions definitely includes all of those one mark questions, and it could even include some two mark questions as well. So that's gonna make up a huge amount of paper one and paper two. And as we've said, there are these synoptic questions which cover more than one of these topics. Even though we teach chemistry as lots of discrete units, there is lots of overlap between them. So for instance, you could have a question which is ostensibly about the transition metals, but then it mentions a tiny bit in there about the atomic structure of the transition metals. And suddenly you're having to do electron configuration or think about a first ionization energy. It's worth bearing in mind that in a normal year, the gap between two grades is about 35 marks. So even if we just take the multiple choice questions on their own, that's not just the difference between an A grade and a B grade, that could almost be the difference between an A grade and a C grade. And what do I mean when I say in a normal year? This year, it's fair to say that because of the advanced information, candidates will score more marks on their A-level exams. Knowing which topics will come up will probably outweigh the impact of having had to complete some lessons remotely or having had time off with COVID. So surely everybody gets better grades? Well, no. While that might be true for a test like a driving test where the pass criteria are set in advance, it isn't true for the A-level exams. The grade boundaries for any exam are decided after that exam to allow the exam board to adjust for a slightly easier or slightly harder exam. But the only way that they can know whether it's an easier or harder exam is by how people perform. So if everybody scores more highly, the grade boundaries just come up. Well, OK, so if that's going to happen, surely it's just going to affect everybody equally and you don't need to worry about it. To simplify this, let's imagine a situation where A-level chemistry is examined with one 10 question paper. And on average, a person who gets an E grade gets two questions right and a person who gets an A star gets seven questions right. Now, you need to remember that some of those people who get those E grades might have found the A-level chemistry course challenging the whole way through, and they've always got E grades in end of topic tests. But actually, quite a few of them will have found the course OK, and maybe they've been going along getting C grades. But when it comes to those final exams, they just haven't left themselves enough time to revise effectively. And so maybe they get caught out on the day with the one topic that they haven't revised being the one that comes up. And that's how they end up with the E grade. Now for those candidates, this advanced information is going to completely cure that problem because suddenly they know what's going to come up for the majority of the questions. And so maybe this year, those candidates who historically would have got two questions right, suddenly get four questions right instead. Now at the other end of the scale, we have those students who we would expect to get A stars. And they're going to be the people who have started their revision really early and have been really thorough the whole way through. So actually knowing what's going to be on the paper for the majority of it isn't really going to make a huge amount of difference because they've already revised really effectively. And actually the thing that's stopping them from getting 10 out of 10 isn't not knowing what's on the paper. It's the fact that they can't work through those questions quickly enough or they can't kind of figure out the analysis side of things. So there's going to be far less of an advantage for those top candidates than there is for the candidates who are usually going to score lower marks. 
This probably means that the grade boundaries are going to be closer together than they have been in previous years. And so those low tariff questions and those multiple choice questions are going to be more important than they've ever been before. So if you're somebody who's aiming for one of the top grades in A-level chemistry, you need to make sure that within your revision, even though you're prioritising the topics that have been listed as definitely coming up, you're also making sure that you're spending some time on the minor topics. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you now understand why these minor topics are so important in your revision. If you found this useful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more A-level chemistry videos coming soon.